You're watching DCTV Denton Community Television. Hi, welcome to The Other Side. I'm Mike Miller. I appreciate you watching very much, and I'd like to thank all the people who've shown up here this year to be on the show. I really appreciate all the support that everybody's given the show over the past year, and I'm very excited to have Andy Lavalita with us here today. And thank you so much, Andy. Hey, no problem. So how's everything been going with you? It's been going pretty pretty crazy, actually, thankfully. I, I, get, I get worried when things are not crazy, but this past month, things have been crazy, so... I guess things are going to be okay for now. <laughs> yeah, it's good to stay busy. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed, man. You've accomplished a lot of things. You, you're a, a great guitarist and a filmmaker and a screenwriter. Oh, thanks, yeah. And I've been checking out some of your videos. You, you've got videos on Vimeo and mm -hmm. then um, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, you, um, it's funny, you know, when you mentioned, you know, when I was first loading in gear, you mentioned, oh, I went to your, your YouTube page, and, and I, I always remember when when someone says they go to my YouTube page, like, oh yeah, that that's still up. I still do that, you know, because I have videos from when I first first started, you know, up yeah. on that YouTube page, and and uh, I th I don't know how many are on there now, but um, yeah, most of my stuff is at, at my Vimeo page at vimeo.com/mmcrp for my company, Mr. Magic Carpet Ride Productions, the most ridiculous name ever invented <laughs> perhaps I don't know. I've read the story about that that is that is uh, that I used to do that I would always take a carpet for my drum set when I played drums for mm -hmm. people and you get attached to a carpet yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny how something like that can be so you know you can get so yeah. attached to it you know it empowers you somewhat yeah, yeah. well it's like you know I mean you know it's basically because I was playing on all these stages and as a musician I mean you know how gross stages can, yeah. <laughs> can be sometimes you know um, and I mean, it just it kind of made me feel comfy and just sort of have a sense of home, you know, when I would take that carpet with me, yeah. you know, and roll it out. And, oh, yeah. Because I like to play, you know, in, in bare, bare feet or just socks, you know, whenever I, whenever I can, you know, it helped me kind of relax a little bit back in the old days, you know. So that carpet helped me. So Mr. Magic Carpet Ride, I guess. I don't know, I don't know why we committed to that, but we did, and now we're stuck. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, when you were going to UNT, you were in one. Of, you were in the lab bands. You ended up in the lab bands and did some recordings and stuff. And I yeah, was yeah. listening to to some of that. Were you doing video at that time too? Starting to do some video. I or? was. I kind of oddly enough. Okay, basically, I mean, I I went. To, my first year of college was in 1998, and I went from 98 to 2001, and I was way behind. You know, I just I was going from music school, and I was just really, really behind, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't make any band, you know, and, um, and in 2001, um, I dropped out, and I started playing in like a, kind of like a jam band kind of thing, kind of like Fish, Grateful Dead kind of thing, you know, um, that band was called Bag, and I did that for like six years, and managed a restaurant at the same time, the Greenhouse restaurant in town, and did that for a while, and booked jazz there and stuff, so when I came back in 2006, uh, to, to finish my degree, um, I kind of right around that same time, I got my first professional kind of video camera and, and uh, started just kind of doing it just on the side. And so from 2006 to 2011 or whenever it was, I ended up graduating. That whole time I was working on both things. I was working on, you know, jazz guitar. And at the same time, I was working on video, teaching myself video. I would just learn, you know, from tutorials online and stuff like that. And I mean, the, the, to make a long story short, basically what happened was, as I was working on these two things, you know, I spent so much time trying to learn how to play jazz guitar, and I thought that if I got a, a bachelor's degree, that maybe I'd be able to, you know, go get a job teaching at a community college or something like that, like, you know. Uh, and I didn't realize how incredibly competitive that skill set is and, and how 
qualified and accomplished, you have to really be and educated and accredited and everything to to make a living doing that. Um, and so about halfway through my return to college, I started seeing my video career being much more lucrative than my my musical career. Um, and, and I tried to make money with music, and I did. I taught music at a school for a while. Um, you know, I had a regular house gig uh, at a couple places. I, I played in top 40 bands and stuff. But the problem is, is that I didn't, I didn't enjoy uh, the kind of gigs I was taking. I didn't enjoy doing that. I, I didn't like playing top 40 music. I didn't like playing in praise and worship bands and stuff. And um, you know. I just I found that it, it wasn't really enjoyable, and that, and that was the only way I could make money because it was so hard for me to find jazz gigs to play the kind of music that I really liked to play. You that know? you were studying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, just, I just, it just wasn't popular. No one wanted it. You know? Yeah. And so video slowly, I mean, kind of it became apparent that it was like, wow, this is so much easier to make money doing this <laughs> than it is music, you know, because I'm not like one of those one o'clock live band superstars that just wows everybody it's like I just kind of made it through and did the best I could and you know but you have to be so good just to even yeah get to participate like that yeah yeah you know yeah exactly so so before I knew it um, you know I it was kind of a nice decision though I, I tell people this a lot I mean you know um, when I when I sort of kind of finally committed to my life as a professional is going to be dedicated to you know video work um, it was really freeing because um, I was able to only take the kind of gigs that I really, really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So now, anytime I leave the house with my guitar, um, it's because I really am excited to be there. And I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to go and play my, I have a weekly restaurant gig and, and you know, it doesn't pay very well at all. But Where is that? It's down in, uh, in Roanoke at 377 and, and 114. Um, and since I just said it didn't pay well, I won't say who it is, but I'll say that I really love them and they, they, they're a small establishment, so I don't expect them to, to pay me well, but yeah. they treat me very well and they, they give us really great food and stuff. Um, but I love that gig and, and I have other gigs that are very meaningful to me, but there'd be no way I could survive off of doing only those things. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, but I love it, so, you know, I don't know. As far as your music, I really enjoyed listening to this. Where did I find these on Vimeo? You don't know what love you know, is. And that's my bike. This, this, this would show exactly how out of touch I am with my musical self professionally. Um, you found those songs on MySpace.com. Oh, really? <laughs> that is the only music page that I have up. I've, I don't have. I don't have a demo. I don't have an album. Um, you know, I don't. I don't have anything uh, other than the stuff that I accomplished, like in school. Um, I just have that up as just some way for like just someone in the world if they're interested in my music to to kind of find it and uh, and it still works so it's it's useful yeah. but yeah maybe indicative of how much work I put into are some of these <laughs> jazz standard on, on Green Dolphin mm -hmm. Street I've heard of that mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think like you know I think there's like Green Dolphin Street and Stolen Moments and Watch What Happens You Don't Know What Love Is you know those are the kind of standards that I like that I really you know enjoy. Playing sort of the American Songbook, you know, 1940 to, you know, 1969 kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know. So there's a lot of that on there, and then there's like I think one or two or something from some recordings from when I played with the Three O'clock Lab Band um, in my in my bachelor's studies at UNT. So. Yeah. Well, you've been invo involved with Snarky Puppy and um, yeah, did the video, the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, those guys, I mean, um, and, and oddly enough, those those were some of the people I met when I first started as well. Um, you know, I just kind of started working with them, you know, because I thought they were amazing. I, I met them when I worked um, at when I managed the the greenhouse restaurant and I was booking jazz there. And did you play with them also? No, oh. well, I always wanted to. And and uh, to be quite frank, I did a lot of favors and and did a lot of work for them. Kind of hoping maybe you know Mike League, the band leader, would kind of be like, hey, you know, why don't you come sit in with us? You know, you play guitar. But uh, I never had the courage to really ask because I'm incredibly intimidated by how good they are. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I worked with them from the very beginning and on a very small level, and and as they've grown and 
the, and the genius of Mike League, the band leader, um, uh, with his business model and his vision, um, I've been fortunate enough to ride along with them on their crazy adventure of, of success. And and uh, now working with them has become one of the biggest parts of my career and, and uh, a way that I spend most of my time. In fact, pretty much all of December and all of January, um, 90% of my income and clients is coming from either Snarky Puppy directly or uh, you know side projects or people that I met because I met Snarky Puppy. You know, really? so it's like the very, very big uh, impact on my life. You know, are they touring right now? Um, at the moment, right now they're not, but it's a very short break in between. Yeah. They they tour. I think they do they do over 200 dates a year really? all over the world. Um, so right now we're, we're actually in the process of editing. We just finished shooting their newest album in Holland. Um, and so uh, Mike was at my house uh, uh, about a week ago. He stayed for about 10 days or so. And we were editing the music together um, of that. And then um, I just got back from New York yesterday. Um, I did some interviews with um, the guys in the band and shot another album for a different artist that's associated with them, um, Magda Yaniku. Right. Um, and uh, so Mike will be back here the day after Christmas and um, we'll finish editing that album and it will be released in, uh, in February, I think. So, uh, and then they'll be, and they go back on tour, I think, uh, January 5th or something and it's, they're just going all over the US and then really? hitting uh, the other half of the world uh, in the summer and spring or something like Are that. Are they touring Europe or? Uh, yeah, yeah. They've, in fact, just recently they've just for the first time gone into sort of Eastern Europe as well. They, they were doing more like, you know, London and, you know, Holland and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the last tour they, they went to like Istanbul and, uh, you know, Japan and just, you know, kind of further, just all, yeah. all over the place, you mm -hmm. know. I can't remember all the cities, but, <laughs> you know. So, good for them, you know. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you sharing that with us, and I appreciate you being here, and I'm going to get out of the way and let you play some music for us. And uh, well. y'all stay tuned to check out Andy and some of his guitar playing. Thanks so much for watching, and have a, a great new year.
Oh, oh, oh.